We always knew there were devils in this area, so we came up to check about two years ago, Sam Fox and I, and we were stunned to find devil latrines, devil footprints, obviously an active devil area. The habitat is clearly conducive to devils, but on top of that, we knew being Defence Force land, devils were protected from a lot of other problems they have in their lives. No, we're confident that's not a major problem by the fact that they live here. They are incumbent devils that happily live amongst the Defence Force activities. The, one of the key goals of the, of the Devil Program is the maintenance of wild populations, the management of them, but on top of that, the third goal of the Devil Program is to limit ecosystem impacts of the loss of the devil. We need to get devil numbers up in the landscape. We need to increase the numbers to reduce the impacts of the loss of them. These are really hard to predict how things will ripple through the ecosystem, but if we can keep the numbers up or rebuild the population, clearly they'll do the job they're designed to do. It's definitely got a possibility. We're so excited by what Greg Woods and his team are doing. This immunotherapy is showing positive results, but it's always a long way off. These kind of, this kind of research relies on serendipitous findings. As they work through it, they'll get closer and closer, and one day, hopefully, we get there. We've certainly learned that it's tricky. Devils often do the opposite from what you think. And we've certainly learned that the devils in this scenario have been dispersing wide and far despite our best efforts to limit that. So now we're working with the idea of captive born versus wild born to see if there's a difference between these two groups and use that to slow down movement to keep them where we want them, to keep them where they can do good things for the environment. Stony Head is a fantastic place to translocate devils for a number of reasons. One of them is that we've already got an incumbent population of wild devils here, so we know that the habitat is good for devils. And previously, before disease arrived here, there used to be a large population of devils living here. It's a good place because it's reduced access or restricted access to the public. So some of the threats that devils would face out in the wider environment, like vehicles, dogs, those sorts of things, they're not gonna face on this site. Um, it's nice and close to the the coast has good habitat and it's reasonably distant from main roads. So that's an interesting question whether this site being a military site would be dangerous to devils and I must admit I think the military were a little concerned but what people need to remember is that this is a wildlife site. We already have devils living here, there are lots of wallabies here, there's wombats here, there's quite a plethora of wildlife living here. There is a small area that's an active firing range, but the threat to wildlife is very low. A number of things. So wild devil recovery is all about working out the best way for us to translocate devils into the wild. It's working out when we release devils, is it better for those devils to be from a captive facility or is it better for them to come from a semi-wild environment like Mariah Island? Is it better for us to release them straight out of a trap or is it better for us to soft release them out of a pen and just let them go at their own pace? we're trying to work out how far they're dispersing away from the re release site. Are there ways that we can keep them in the release site? Do bait stations work as a soft release mechanism, as a dampening dispersal mechanism of keeping them in the environment? There's so many questions we want to ask with wild devil recovery, but the overall aim is to work out how do we put devils back into the environment in the most successful way for the devils? Great question. So the vaccine trial, and we have to remember that it's a trial, has been worked on by the Menzies Research Institute for a number of years now, and they're getting very excited with some of the results that they're seeing in the devils that they're uh, boosting with the vaccine. What they need to do is trial this vaccine on as, not, as many devils as they can and see how they react to that vaccine over time. So, so by um, trialling the vaccine on devils in the wild, they get a real life challenge from DFTD. So when um, they have interactions with wild devils, they're actually getting a real life challenge rather than being immunised with DFTD cells in a lab. So it's, a, I guess, a real life trial of whether the vaccine is going to work or not. Not. So we've had two releases so far, one at Narantapu in September last year and another in Forestier in November and February this year. And 
one of the key things that we've learned is within that first two to four weeks period post-release, devils are quite vulnerable to threats that they haven't faced before. So things like roadkill dogs, these sorts of things. So with our current translocation to Stony Head, we've put in a lot of effort into mitigating the biggest of those threats that we see, which is roadkill. So some of the things that we've done is we've put up lots of signs to warn people. Those are static signs as well as active signs, just to make people aware that there might be more devils on the road at night. Um, we've made all the public in the local area aware by doing letter drops and telling them about the project and about the local devils going into the environment. We've been feeding devils in the free range enclosures from wheelbarrows so they don't associate food with the sound of a car. And we've also put reflective tape on their collars so that if they're on a road at night and a car comes around the corner, they're going to see a bright flash from the reflective tape. So it makes it easier for them to see them quicker. A black devil on a black road at night, especially if it's wet, they're actually quite difficult to see. So it's, it's not all the driver's fault. Sometimes it's pretty hard for them to miss devils if they just run out in front of you. Three one five seven one. Eight point eight point one without sack. Yeah. So here, especially where the unit is, mm. she's getting this. So over time, that's going to start really separating. Mm -hmm. That's right. This sits, but what is there anything on there that? So the, there's I a bit of a rough mm -hmm. patch there. Yeah. But is it maybe from him trying to scratch it off? It's quite round the top, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. But I think with that, it just means I wouldn't want to go any tighter. I yes. Just have mm -hmm. a, I can't get that off. Yeah. Okay. Just going to quick look over.
I'm holding, supporting the collar cool. from underneath as well. So. Yeah. Seven. Yeah, Kisa. Seven seven point seven without sack. Do you want me to hold this one for you, Drew? Yeah. I'm five point five without the set. He's got a broken canine tip, I'm guessing that's existing. That's not new, so. <laughs> and that is, so you've got. Mackin. Which one's that one? Even Tuesday. No, so we can't take green. So um, how many more do you need? That's six. I need two more. Two more. Good point. <laughs> 